Hi students, today is all about correlations. So we have two continuous variables and we are trying to understand the relationship between them. So relationship and correlation in stats are essentially the same word. They're completely interchangeable. And we start by graphing X and Y. So we can see we have kind of three choices. We have mileage and value and this is a negative relationship. So as mileage increases, your value of your car decreases. Unfortunate, but that is a relationship that we have. On the flip side, we have the more accidents you get in, the more your insurance costs. So this is a positive relationship. As one increases, the other increases. I apologize for my dog. We can also have a zero correlation between quality and color. And again, this would be a continuous variable, so we are looking at shades of blue or gray. And here we have everything scattered completely throughout, and there is no relationship between the two. The null hypothesis is there is no relationship between the two. The alternative is that there is a relationship between the two. So we are still in inferential statistics. So a correlation is a measure of the relationship between two or potentially more continuous variables. It can assess strength and direction. So R is your correlation coefficient. It's gonna be between one and negative one. And this is kinda of what we're looking at. So a weak relationship is shown right here because there's not a lot of overlap between the two circles. A moderate relationship has more overlap, which is what we're trying to understand. How much are these two related? How much are they essentially the same thing? In a strong relationship, we have a lot of overlap between the two circles. The R value that you were going to get, so we calculate a correlation and it gives us an R value. We can have a zero correlation, meaning there's no correlation, up to a positive one. So a very strong correlation is pretty much between a 0.7 and above. And then moderate is kind of right here between four and seven. And then a weak positive is kind of between four and two, but these are all very general. So weak, moderate, strong. And then on the other side, we can have a weak negative correlation, a weak, a moderate negative correlation, and again, a strong negative correlation. And here's what those look like. So a strong positive correlation, we have all the dots right on a nice line. Strong negative, again, all the dots are on the line. The angle is just different. A weak positive, so we could draw a line right here and everything is really far from it. So all of these dots are really far away. A moderate negative, so the dots are closer together on the line that we would draw, but it's not as tight as the strong up here. No correlation means there's no line that we can really draw, in which case we draw a horizontal line. The R, again, is the degree of relationship between the two variables. So based on this R value, we can say strong, medium, weak, moderate, weak, no correlation. And we can also assess direction. So is it positive, is it negative? The strength of that association is the R squared, which is literally taking the R and squaring it. It is not another thing that we do. So the R squared is also called the coefficient of determination. It is the extent to which the variables share common properties or characteristics. So if we think back to those circles, it is how much of the circle is overlapping. That is the R squared. And we talk about it as the percent of variance that is explained by the relationship of the other. For example, if I have an R of 0.9, then we know it's positive and we know it's strong, but that's all we can say. The R squared, so taking the 0.9 and squaring it, is 0.81 or 81%, meaning 81% of the variance in A is explained or determined by B. You could also say it the other way. So 81% of the variance in B is explained by A. So this is, means 81% of those two circles are overlapping and are essentially the same. They're measuring the same thing. So if I know A, then I can talk about 81% of B. If I have an R of 0 0.5, 0 0.5 was a moderate relationship, it's also positive, 
our R squared would be 0.25 or 25%, in which case 25% of A is explained by B, or you could say it the other way, doesn't matter. Meaning, in this case, 75% of the variance in the two circles are not overlapping. We're only overlapping 25%, so 75% are different constructs. Please keep in mind that correlation is not causation. There could be a logical connection between the two, and we have found out that there is a relationship between the two, but this is not a cause and effect relationship. For example, there is an R of 0.7, so we know that that is a strong positive relationship between your reading level and your shoe size. That means that they are highly related. There is something happening between those two. And if I go into regression, then I could predict your reading level based on your shoe size. Keep in mind that that does not mean that in order to increase my reading level, I should go buy bigger shoes. That makes no sense. So this is the relationship. This is not a cause and effect thing that is happening. That is a different statistical thing. To calculate, it's really nasty. And it is as bad as it looks. But don't worry, Excel does it for you. This is under data, data analysis correlates. And you highlight everything and it gives you a huge table of all of your R values. If you want the R squared, then you take that value and square it. 